Sextortion is an epidemic, there's no question, but we really don't hear that much about it, mainly because its victims are usually too embarrassed or ashamed to talk about it publicly. Until now. Today we'll be hearing from a survivor of sextortion. We're going to learn how it started, what happened to them, and most importantly what they did to fix it. Now this person has requested to remain anonymous, and we're going to honor that. Without further ado, here's their story. You know, the good thing about DFC2 has been that this was a few this was a few months ago that this happened. And in that time, you know, obviously I still have a little worry, you know, you can never really trust a criminal. Did they really delete my content? Uh, it's hard to say. Um, I believe they did, but just in case, you know, for peace of mind, uh, I did take advantage of a, a secondary sort of uh, phase, phase two, they call it, uh, that DSC offers. And in that, they're, they're monitoring my online presence. They're monitoring my accounts. They're kind of uh, staying in my back pocket so that uh, should this person come back or should something else happen to me, uh, I got them right there, uh, like an insurance card, you know? You hope you never need it, but I'm so glad I have it. And that's something that has been incredibly valuable to me because uh, it has allowed me to rest easy. So it's allowed me to browse freely and not, not worry as much as uh, I might be if I, if I didn't take advantage of this. Phase two isn't always recommended, but it is something that we offer to all of our clients. There are a few different options for what we do in phase two, from contacting the blackmailers, local authorities and internet service providers and putting them on notice, to continued monitoring of our clients' accounts and social media presence, to simply being peace of mind by being just a call away should our clients need any further assistance. Phase two is an added benefit that gives our clients much needed relief in what might otherwise be a very anxious and difficult time in their lives. And that's been really nice. Uh, I don't know any other you know, company that would back up this sort of, I guess, service the way they have. Um, they really believe in what they do and I, I sense that when I talk to them and when I read that report and when I know that if something were to happen, I could just call them right now and tell them exactly what's going on and they'll step in like Superman and just take care of it. Uh, and that's that's really nice. You know, I, I had some dark times during this uh, before I contacted them. You know, fear of just being exposed and my life being ruined. And now the only thing I'm really worried about is that next friend request. You know, is it going to be a real person? Is it going to be a scammer? Is it going to be something I can trust. But that's, unfortunately, seems to be the state of the internet right now. It's a very dangerous place and I learned that the hard way. The anxiety that people feel after they've been victims of sextortion can be very difficult to navigate. Uh, it can and does change how the affected person uses the internet, particularly social media. Surviving sextortion can create new barriers in regards to trust and how much information someone is willing to share online. While limiting your footprint on social media is a good thing in some capacity, for many young people it can become alienating and lonely, which is why we always recommend sharing your story with a professional counselor or therapist or even just those closest to you so that you aren't facing these potential new challenges alone. But I do take a lot of solace in knowing that there are companies out there like DFC that are on the front line really combating this sort of, I don't know, criminality um it's it's nice to know that i'm not alone even when i feel the most vulnerable and alone i just wish i would have called them sooner because it would have saved me uh, a lot of money and a lot of grief but if i can give any advice to anyone that's listened to my story it's that you didn't do anything wrong you were tricked they're very good at what they do and you're not, you're not alone. There are people like people at DFC that can help you through this. Uh, I know I had some dark thoughts during all of this, but yeah, just, you're not alone. DFC will help you. The crime of sextortion is constantly evolving and because of that, so are our tactics. We're learning new things about these criminals and how they operate every single day. Our team works around the clock to stay one step ahead of these bad apples and criminal syndicates. 
Unfortunately, we project that we will continue to see a rise in these sorts of crimes in the coming years. And that is why it is essential that we talk about it, share information, share stories, and create a unified front against these criminals. We hope that you were able to learn a thing or two from this incredible story, and we're here to answer any questions that you may have. If you or someone you know has been affected by or is currently dealing with sextortion, reach out to our team today. We can and will help you through this. Thanks for watching, and until next time, stay safe out there.